Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip. In this quick tip, we're going to be going over the start and stop transcript commandlets. And these commandlets actually let you very easily log what's going on in your PowerShell script. Now, of course, uh, the better alternative is to actually create like a logging solution and then write logs to either uh, your logging solutions, which could be a specific server that holds the log files, an elastic server, uh, a seam, or a uh, SQL database for logs. Uh, any type of logging solution would probably be a lot better. This way you can easily search for it uh, and you can correlate uh, data between different logs. Uh, but definitely in the beginning stages, a transcript could be very, very useful. Also, this could be very handy if someone is asking you to do a investigation or a lookup on something and give you and give them the steps of how you actually ended up getting to the solution or result that you got, uh, because the transcript would actually show them the exact steps that you took to get there. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started with the transcripts here. So the first way that we're going to look at is just uh, putting it in a script and then automating that script and seeing what the transcript looks like. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a start transcript. And then the only uh, parameter you really have to fill out here is the path parameter. And what we are going to do is we're going to put in a path here. We're going to see, uh, do C and then we're going to say a uh, YouTube uh, task transcript. And what we are also going to do is we're also going to put in a uh, date format in here uh, so we can get the date and time that the script is from or the transcript is from. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a get date here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a format and we're going to do a set of double quotes here. We're going to do all lowercase y's. So four lowercase y's, two uppercase m's for month dash two lowercase b's for days and then we're going to do a space and then uh, two lowercase h's for hours and then dash two lowercase m's for minutes and you can you can put seconds in here but i'm just going to put hours and minutes that's going to be enough for me because we're just going to be running this maybe every let's say five minutes or something uh, but if you did need the seconds you could definitely put them in there and then what we're going to do at the end here is we're just going to do a dot txt and then if you just want to make sure that that is formatted properly, you can actually highlight uh, the entire, not the entire thing, but the entire path with the double quotes here and just run that section. And here we can actually see YouTube task transcripts, August 13th at 1.26, which is the current time here. So then after that, we can actually just run our commandlets that we would typically run. So in this case, all we're going to do is we're going to do a get ad user and we are going to want to do a filter star. We want to get all of our users in Active Directory uh, every time that this script runs. And we are going to specify the server jacked.ca. That is our uh, Active Directory server. And then all we need to do is a stop transcript here. And we are going to save that. And then if we actually are to run this directly in here, we will see that we get our output that we expect. We get all of our uh, users here, but also if we actually go in our C, we will actually see our file in here and it will have a bunch of information. So it'll have the start time in the file as well. It'll have the usernames that the script ran under, uh, the machine name, a bunch of different configurations that were set, uh, the process ID, the PowerShell version that it ran under, the addition core, uh, our OS version, uh, so we have a lot of information here, and then we actually have our output of our script here, which is perfect. But now let's actually see if we automate that as a task, if we get the same thing. So we are actually just going to open up our task schedule here, create a task, and we're just going to call this transcript. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to say run whether the user is logged in or not, run with highest privileges. And we are going to trigger this task as a daily task. We'll want it to repeat every five minutes. Why not? And then we're going to do an action here. And we are going to select our script here that we have. 
And then in front of the program script here, since we want to run it in PowerShell 7, we're going to do pwsh space dash file space. And we're going to click on OK here and then click on Yes and click on OK once again. It's going to prompt us for our password because we said whether the user is logged in or not. So it's going to prompt us for the password. And here we have it. So now let's actually go ahead and let's forcefully run this job. It will run automatically, but I don't really want to wait five minutes to see it run. And if we go into our C, we will see that we have a second output here and it is the exact same output. So we actually get all of our AD users in this transcript. Now, of course, this is maybe a slightly bad example just because we are simply getting the AD users. We aren't really doing anything to them. Uh, but this would show you the exact output of what you would see on the console. And an example of that is, let's say we had made a mistake in our script here. So let's go back in here and let's make a typo in the server name. And then we're just going to go ahead and save that. And now let's go ahead and run that transcript again. Now we have another file here. If we look at that, now we get our get AD user unable to contact the server. This may be because the server does not exist. It is currently down or does not have the active directory web services running. So this tells us that right away we have a problem in our script. We could go ahead and we can actually look at that. Uh, and that could be very, very handy in the beginning stages of a script. Maybe something isn't going as expected and you want to know why. You can easily just add the start transcript at the beginning, stop transcript at the end, and then investigate why it's not working. Because maybe it's working when you're running it in this window, um, in the visual code environment or the ISC environment. But when you go to do it in an automated task, when it's running as your task account, um, or doing something on another server, it doesn't work because of something that you missed or something that's not installed. It's a lot easier to look at it with the start transcripts. That's happened to me personally, um, where I make scripts using my account. And then once it gets put on the task server, it runs as a, a service account. And that service account might have slightly different permissions, um, or it might just have uh, some different uh, tools installed on the server and you might not necessarily know and this would be a good way to investigate to see what exactly is going wrong maybe it's something small maybe it's something a little bit bigger but at least it gives you that uh, starting point of knowing exactly what's going on now there is the possibility as well of let's say someone asks you to uh, do some type of investigation or get some type of results or maybe they don't know how to do something in PowerShell and they and they want to learn how you do it or something. So these are all different examples where start transcript is very, very useful in the console window. So as we saw in the start transcripts here, we only get the results. Uh, we don't really see what commands were executed. Whereas in the console here, so let's say start transcript. And once again, we are just going to set our path here. We are going to set that to the backslash and we're going to say console YouTube uh, transcript dot txt and our transcript has started and now let's say in this case we want to get all the services so get service but we want to limit this to only select the name and status so let's do that here and let's execute that so we have all of our services and then all we need to do here is just a stop transcript and run that now if we go here we actually see our transcript once again we have all the information uh, we have our uh, configuration name we have our host application process id uh, we have our username that it ran as and here we actually see what was actually ran. So we see that we ran get service, we piped it to select name and comma status, and then we see our exact output that we saw on our console window. So then you would be able to give this to someone if they didn't know how to do something specifically in PowerShell, or if someone asked you to do an investigation and give you the steps of how you got to the result that you got, this would be how you would do that. Could be very useful in like legal investigations or again, in teaching someone how to use PowerShell, this could be very, very handy. 
So that is really pretty much it for start and stop transcripts. Very useful for logging um, amongst other things in PowerShell. Now, of course, for the logging aspects, like I mentioned before, uh, an actual logging solution is definitely a lot better, uh, but is definitely better than nothing. Um, so if you guys have any commandlets that you guys would like some more quick tips on, please let me know in the comment section. Also, please hit that subscribe and like button and also hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out and I will see you guys on the next video.